Welcome everybody, Jim Resonated Lee here from ClimateViewer.com and we're going to talk about HARP today. What do you know about HARP? Uh, I don't know much, but uh, I did a little reading about it and I made this uh, website, the map, so we can uh, take a look at it. This is a KML file, Google Earth, keyhole markup language, allows you to geolocate data. Zoom in here to Gakona, Alaska, and you'll see HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. If you click on this, click on HARP Details, I'll take you over to my other website, the Radiation Database, to the HARP University, and you'll see several articles that I wrote over on my blog, as well as Tales from the Crypt Deleted Internet Pages. Everything on this page has been removed from the internet and is no longer there. Good times. So what's at the heart facility? If you come up to the front gate, this is what you'll see. The heart research building uh, and the control center, AKA Death Star One. <laughs> You know, the power plants where they get their gas energy uh, pumped up from the ground, they turn it into electricity with these diesel engines and a magneto hydrodynamic converter thing that I barely understand. But apparently they turn natural gas into electricity and then they pump it into the air with the IRI or the ionospheric research instrument. 2.8 to 10 megahertz at 3.6 megawatts power. That's 3.6 million watts. Um, I don't know about you, but if you have a CB, you can't broadcast over 4 watts. So check that out. 72 foot tall towers. You can see them here. It's going a little closer. Not a very good picture, but that's all they give you. 72 feet tall dipole. Here's when they were building it. Here's another view from the top. Plenty of pictures online of this instrument. <clears throat> now you can see where the satellite image is cut in half. You got good picture here. You got crap picture up here. So let's go line by line. The MUIR is the modular UHF ionospheric radar. It's 512 antenna elements operating at 446 megahertz. This is a baby heart. The two work together. You also have the VHF ionospheric radar. Looks like a bicycle pole. <laughs> At the end of this driveway, they have an aircraft alert radar to tell the planes to stay the heck out of the way. And they have a digison. Now this is an approximate location. I saw a map recently that kind of confirms my guess here. But um Basically, this is a ionosond, yeah, ionosond, digisond, um, DPS-4. It's off the side of this track. And then down at the end, you have the instrument pad, which looks like this, which has the Kakona station. Um, this is the ITS-10 station. More on that later. Uh, Harp Optics Shelter, pretty. They've got all kinds of stuff in there, um, all sky cameras, so they can watch the air glow they're busy building or making. Uh, VHF Classic Rheometer looks like this, and then that is the Harp facility. Other things in the Harp button little known uh, locations. This is a chain of uh, instruments, the Delta station, this station. There are four of them in a row and they read data from the heart facilities. Also it's um, monitored by the high latitude monitoring station. You see the antennas? You got one here, one here, five back here, two on either side, one over here. That's what I've been able to find. The Elmendorf Air Force Base High Latitude Monitoring Station. Very little info on this place. But it is uh, 
definitely linked with HARP and it is used in many of the studies that I've read in, on PDFs and stuff. Also you have High Pass. And High Pass is uh, supposedly out of commission now. It's a 70 megawatt, um, similar to the HARP facility. Just uh, totally, you know, what, just one big tower, and then a series of wires coming off of it. They also have a LiDAR facility here, which is pretty awesome because it's made out of liquid metal. Liquid mirror telescope. 2.7 meter liquid mercury. That's pretty hot. It's a laser they fired up in the sky. Pretty cool. And then we have the Big Daddy Poker Flats. Now the way HARP works is they need a hole in the sky. So Poker Flats shoots a missile into the sky and burns a hole in the ionosphere which causes a little tornado and plasma to form in that vacuum. Then they heat that with HARP and uh, the PFISR, the Poker Flat Incoherent Scatter Radar. Um, the two in conjunction form what's called an ionospheric mirror. Um, it allows them to not only bounce radio waves over the horizon, but it allows them to um, block <laughs> satellites overhead. So if uh, a country doesn't want another country to spy on them with their satellites, they might throw a mirror up in the sky. <laughs> also, this affects the weather. Uh, we won't get into that today. More on that later. Anyway, this map, I pulled this out of a PDF and stuck it in Google Earth. Um, but it's accurate, and this is what it looks like. We have the telemetry station. This is NASA. We have a LIDAR, which is another laser. LIDARs are aerosol. Um, they, they, they can fire a laser through the sky and measure how what's in the sky like what particles are in the clouds and things like that so usually you, you'll find a lidar nearby any facility studying the atmosphere you have a climate change monitoring station you have a communications array with microwave links to the nearby um, colleges and stuff the T. Neil Davis Science Operations Center this is the main poker flats research range info click it in the middle also, um, I never did this one, I'm going to have to add it later, but there's also another small array right here that's run by Japan. <laughs> so the Japanese have one here as well. And then you have the Poker Flats Imaging Rheometer. Pretty awesome. Here's what the sign at the front gate looks like. All this stuff I, I you know, found it online, made the pictures, and put them in the bubbles to share with you. I hope you share them with somebody else. So is that it? Um, is, that, is that the best we can do? Well, HARP happens to be the biggest one of the upper atmospheric radars in the world, but people always say there are other HARP facilities around the world. Let's take a look at them. Now, there are several different categories, and I'm going to try to stick to just the big ones for this video. But you have Super Darn, which look like this. This is two super darns in one. Pretty awesome. Super, at Fort Hayes. There's one and there's the other. Pretty cool. And there's the one that's at Christmas Valley. And these things are everywhere. Super darns are all over the place. The biggest one is down here. Let's take a look at it. This the, oh, that's the receiver. Let's get over here real quick. Chica Marca. I said that right. Chica Marca, Peru. Um, lots of in info on this one. Uh, this is from Cedar Web at the UCAR EDU. Instrument details. It's just like HARP. It's really big. Uh, 4.5 million watts. It has a incoherent and coherent scatter radar. Um, 
you have to understand a lot of these antennas can be used different ways. So just plugging a different kind of amplifier into it, they can modulate it in a different way. And so that's Chica Marca. What happened to? There we go. That's just terrible. Oh, that's just horrible. What happened to the good? There we go. There's a good clean shot of it. It's huge. Much bigger than harp. But not as powerful. So let's hop back out here real quick. And look at the other really big ones. Now Tromso, before I get to Tromso, right now harp is the biggest one in the world. In the very near future, there will be the IceCat 3D. And that ain't it. We'll have to zoom in to get it, but it's this big. Do you see this? These are the receivers in the array. And it will have 100 gigawatts of power. IceCat 3D upgrade to 100 gigawatts. So this may not be the baddest one in the world, but it will be very shortly. Here's the map confirming the points that I put on the, the Google Earth map. I made this little layover too. I found this in a PDF and did it in Photoshop. <clears throat> this is the Tromso array, 144 antenna array at 1200 megawatts ERP. Now, the, in the information on these vary. I don't fully understand how to convert ERP to just plain wattage. Somebody smarter than me will have to do that for you. I'm just going with the best information I can find on it. And on a lot of these antennas, they're very secretive. Let's just put it that way. So, and the place that I got that information is obviously linked there. So you can check it out yourself. And those who <laughs> know better than I can email me. It's right here. <laughs> and uh, correct me. But anyway, they have a harp-like array as well as a VHF radar, which is rather large, three megawatt, and a UHF radar at uh, two megawatt. Now, all of these, you know, output together. They also have a Digisond here, and nearby they have the Ares, which is here, which is capable of doing fan beams and pencil beams, like circles, circle two, saw, sweep, <laughs> all that stuff that somebody likes to talk about. Um, moving along, here, well, I don't know why I keep zooming out. You can click this button at any time to zoom around. Australia, we won't talk about Australia. We will talk about Russia. Now, Russia has several. They have the URAN network, which is all of these together. Kharkov, Ukraine, incoherent scatter radar, 2.5 megawatt. The giant Ukrainian radio telescope. Here, let's take a look at that one. It's pretty neat. I put a little thing so you can actually see how big it is. But they look like this. There's a sign from the front door. And here's what they look like. Rows and rows of antennas. And there's the URAN 1. And Kharkov. You ran two. Rows and rows. The Russian woodpecker, aka the Duga radar array, Chernobyl, <laughs> responsible for the woodpecker signal. Let's check that one out. And uh, for those who want the fun, click up here for show 3D buildings. Pretty awesome, right? 
I'm going to model a harp in 3D. So maybe in a future video, you'll get to see harp do this. Very, very cool. Zooming out. Now, where is... We have the Oland window. Now, this is mentioned on the harp website. This is the only reason I added it. Because for all intents and purposes, this is like a GeoDS, um, GeoDSS facility. These uh, windows track satellites. So the four of these work together to point lasers at satellites in space so that they can track all objects flying overhead. Now, um, this place is literally mentioned right here. Facilities are also located in, and I'm showing you them all now, and this happens to be one of them they mention. So, confirmed right on the HARP website. Now, I don't see an array. I mean, this looks like a landing pad to me, but it very well could be an array. Olant window. Never heard of that before. Mentioned only on the ARP sheet. Okay. The Tesla Howitzer. You gotta read this one. Make sure you read this one. Tesla Howitzer. It's in Kazakhstan. <laughs> in the beautiful land of Kazakhstan. China's Sea Rip. This is China's harp. Oh, they're not to be discounted. And no, that's not a power junction box in the middle of nowhere next to all the bombing ranges. Yeah, those that's a bombing range. I'm sure you saw the conspiracy videos on these weird objects, but yes, this is their bombing range. That's a bombing range. And that's their harp in the middle of nowhere. It's definitely not a power box. There ain't nothing for miles. <laughs> and here's the other really, really big bad one nobody knows about. Ear cuts incoherent scatter radar. I'm sure I'm butchering that. 3.2 megawatt. And it's a boss. Um, anybody who knows anything about speakers, if you load a speaker into a horn, it is much louder. <laughs> I would imagine this is a very efficient design. Um, the Russians were the first to modify the weather with radio waves, and you can bet your sweet, you know, butt that this thing is powerful and capable of doing some crazy stuff. It is to be watched. Uh, anyway, there it's supposedly. Uh, studying the atmosphere and uh, responsible for <laughs> missile defense at the same time. So Soviet space station, the space surveillance station, OS-1. And here you can see the horns. Very good. Let's hop over to Japan real quick. Where's Japan's? Shigaraki Middle and Upper Atmospheric Observatory. The MU radar is a one megawatt, but it looks so cool. I mean, this thing looks cool. You don't get much more sci-fi than that. It's down in a hill, and it just looks neat. Very, very neat. And there are many, many more like this on the map, as you can see. So feel free to dig in. There's plenty here to wet your whistle. Um, if you know of any that aren't on my map, please feel free to email me. It's up here in the ticker, the marquee. 
I'm going to add all kinds of things to this map, and uh, <laughs> if you have any suggestions for stuff I haven't already covered, feel free to <clears throat> email that in as well. And uh, just to give you a preview of what else is in the database. That's just the tip of the iceberg, people. Gwen stations. Awesome, right? Very cool stuff. Everybody loves the EVLA. The VBLA. And that's not all, folks. We also have nuclear. And let's definitely not forget Big Brother. Drones, DHS, Echelon. 